Good afternoon, and welcome to the Fall Faculty Assembly. I'm Catherine McTammany, and I'm an Associate Professor of the Practice in the, of Education in the Department of Teaching and Learning. I'm also the Faculty Senate Chair for the 2020-2021 academic year. Today's event will start with remarks from Chancellor Daniel Deermeyer, who will formally address the faculty for the first time since stepping into his role this summer. He will also recognize our colleagues who are reaching 25 years of service. I'll conclude the event with some updates from the Faculty Senate after the 2020 Faculty Awards and focus on our approach and hopes for this extraordinary year ahead. Before we start, I'd like to thank the members of the Faculty Senate and our Executive Committee, along with Andrew Brodsky and Stacy McCarty, both of whom made today's event a reality. I'd also like to thank the Provost's Office for Faculty Affairs, the Office of the Chancellor, Division of Communications, and events at Vanderbilt team. Lastly, thanks to all of you for joining us today and for your continued dedication to each other and to our university. We have spent months planning for the beginning of this semester and adapting our courses to the parameters of these very unusual times. But we have also looked forward to connecting with students and colleagues and to making a continued impact with our work. With that, I'd like to introduce Daniel Deermeyer, who became Vanderbilt's ninth chancellor on July 1st. He brings to the role his proven ability to connect people and ideas across disciplines, to harness scholarship and research as forces for good. He believes in the power of education and in the mission of this university to transform lives and move society forward, particularly in moments like the present, when our role is more critical than ever. The Faculty Senate is pleased to partner with him as we chart the path ahead for our university. Please welcome Chancellor Daniel Deermeyer. Thank you, Catherine, for the nice and kind introduction. And um, welcome to all of you to a semester unlike any other. For me personally, uh, the start of the semester also uh, is the culminating event in a transition unlike any other. Um, as you may imagine, when I um, started my transition, we had everything planned out. Uh, there was a lot of briefings uh, and meetings planned, and um, I would spend more and more time in Nashville and at Vanderbilt. And of course, all of this was out of the window um, starting in early March. Uh, when the COVID-19 crisis hit uh, Vanderbilt University and all the universities in the country and the world. Ironically, the fact that we had to shift gears, work together in a remote fashion, made it easier for me to become a member of the uh, Vanderbilt community. Um, the fact that we had to deal with this challenge um, right away uh, made it possible for me to work with the people individually, to get a much better feeling for the culture of the university, and as a consequence of that, I was much more involved um, with the decision-making at Vanderbilt uh, than I originally had anticipated. Um, and what I learned during this process had reinforced everything that I cherished and looked forward to when I accepted the chancellorship at Vanderbilt. The culture of collaboration, the dedication to a common mission, um, the ability to work through difficult challenges, uh, to be guided by data, and the most recent information uh, was impressive all the way through. And I want to thank in particular the vice chancellors, the deans, the board, and especially uh, Provost uh, Susan Venti, who has been a tremendous partner throughout this process. So uh, let me say a few things about uh, what is on everybody's mind, the return to campus. Um, as everybody knows, this has been a tremendous, enormous, monumental effort for our staff and our faculty over the last weeks and months. Uh, we have had people literally working 16-hour days nonstop uh, since March. Hundreds of people have worked together and collaborated in order to welcome our faculty and our students back on campus. Now, this was not the easy path. Uh, many, of other, many other universities have chosen uh, to stay or to move back to a uh, full online um, approach to their education, but we strongly believed from the beginning that our mission demanded it. And so our goal that has guided us was to do everything possible to make it possible for the faculty and for the students to come back together on campus. 
Why? Because we, we believe in the power of a residential college model for a transformative education, both for our undergraduates um, and also for our graduate students. And also because we believe that field-defining research that is taking place at Vanderbilt every day is so important and never more important than now. Um, somewhat ironically, we have the very same researchers that were shut out of their laboratories are now working overtime in order to develop um, vaccines or therapeutics in order to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. I think it's very important for us to remember that we are engaged in a noble mission, that the impact that we have on the lives of our students is profound, and that this responsibility and commitment needs to be realized, if at all possible, of course, in the context of providing as healthy and as safe an environment that we can for faculty, staff, and students. I'm particularly proud how during this process we were able to come together as a community. We had to work through difficult challenges. Uh, we had to do things differently. We had to set aside old ways of doing our own work on do and working together in, in new and unusual um, context and with new and different models. And I think we have succeeded tremendously. Our students have stepped up. Uh, I have visited many, of, many classrooms in the last week. Uh, they're there, they're present, they're engaged, they're reconnecting uh, with, with old friends and they are getting used to Vanderbilt if they're newly arriving on campus. Uh, Everybody is doing their specific, is honoring their specific responsibility, people are stepping up. Obviously, this is just the first week, but so far, uh, I think we are, we are very pleased on where we are. Obviously, this will require continued and sustained effort. It will also require um, the ability and the commitment for all of us to continue to adapt and learn. Um, nobody has done this before. Nobody has ever in the history of universities uh, been able uh, to bring students and faculty back to campus uh, in, the, in the midst um, of, a, of a global pandemic. For example, one of the things that we just announced, we will have additional periodic testing um, for undergraduates and for other parts of the, of the community because we believe that this is an added feature that would be helpful at this particular point in time. So the bottom line is we're proud on where we are. We are by no means done. To quote Churchill, this is not the beginning of the end. It's perhaps the end of the beginning. But it's very important that as we're dealing with the challenges at hand that are profound and difficult and challenging for all of us, that we do not lose track of the long term as well. And uh, personally, the way that I have engaged with that and have started my thinking on that is I've had a, an enormous amount of conversations uh, with faculty over the last weeks and months, with department chairs, with individual faculty, with leaders of institutes. Of course, I've continued my discussion with the deans as well. And what I have found have been insightful, enlightening conversations, full of enthusiasm. I've learned more about the tremendous research that's going on at the university, and also uh, the commitment to Vanderbilt as a university. This is palpable. It's a place that has a unique culture, uh, that has a particular approach to how we interact with others as faculty that, uh, that is unique, and it was wonderful to see this as I was engaging with faculty uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I will continue these conversations, and I look forward to having more interactions and discussions with faculty uh, as we move on throughout the weeks. I should also say that as a university, we will continue to invest in our faculty. We will not retract. Um, we have to do it, of course, in the age of COVID-19 and in the context of a tremendous amount uh, of uncertainty. As you may recall, uh, in March and April, uh, universities were hit financially in the, one of the most dramatic fashions in their history. And we, as well as many other universities, had to take painful measures. Now, given the, the, the uh, financial stewardship, the responsible financial stewardship under uh, Emeritus Chancellor Nick Zeppos, uh, Interim Chancellor and now Provost Susan Venti, and uh, the entire management team, we were able to avoid some of the more uh, drastic uh, cuts that had, that had to happen at other universities. Uh, we did not have mass layoffs, we did not have mass furloughs, uh, and we did not ask 
uh, we did not set aside the um, retirement contributions of our faculty, things that happened at our peer institutions. Having said that, uh, this was a painful period for all of us, but it had to be done in order to deal with the challenges at hand. We're now a few months into this, and um, things have calmed down, fortunately. That doesn't mean that, uh, that there will be no challenges in the future, uh, but it also is an, is an opportunity for us to think about the long term, to think more how we want to invest, continue to invest in research and in the faculty at Vanderbilt, and we intend to do so. Uh, let me say also uh, a word on another important initiative that we have started a few weeks ago. Uh, that is related to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, as many of you know, um, we have uh, appointed uh, Andre Churchwell uh, as permanent vice chancellor and William Robinson as vice provost, um, advancing and furthering our work in the area of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, and we have, on the first day when I assumed the chancellorship, made a commitment uh, to the Vanderbilt community to build a more inclusive Vanderbilt. Uh, this will not be just one thing, there will be many things that help us advance that goal. Uh, as a first concrete step, uh, we formed an ad hoc committee of the Board of Trust to work with the faculty, work with the leadership in order to advance that agenda. And we've increased funding. There's a various different programmatic activities that we engaged in, and we will keep the university community engaged as, we've, as we continue the discussion um, in order to be able to make meaningful and impactful progress on our commitment to a more co inclusive Vanderbilt. Importantly, that process itself needs to be inclusive, it needs to be consistent with our culture, it needs to be collaborative, it needs to be thoughtful, and it needs to be based on research and evidence. Uh, this is who we are. Uh, we've started the process along those lines, and I'm very pleased on how far we have come, but of course, uh, we are far from done, and uh, we, are, we are just beginning in our journey, and together with the faculty, with the students, with the staff, and with the board. Uh, and then finally, let me say something about how we're thinking about, you know, moving forwards towards the future. Um, as I'm thinking about the, um, the next few weeks, the next few months, um, I am filled with optimism. Um, COVID-19 reminds us of our mission and how important this mission is. Um, when you think about some of the challenges that we're now seeing um, with respect to uh, K-12 to schools not being opened, uh, when we think about you know, all the disruption of life that is happening all across the country uh, in our own state, in our community, I think it reminds us of the importance of our mission, of our edu education and of our research mission. As an educational institution of higher learning, we have a tremendously profound impact on the life of our students. Uh, we can literally transform the life of our students forever. And we're providing them an education that helps them grow as young minds and as whole people so that they can assume uh, leadership roles um, as they're moving into their post-Vanderbilt path. Our research has transformative impact on society. Uh, of course, as we're thinking about um, the impact right now in the area of health, in the medical side, it's profound, and our faculty are front and center of these efforts, uh, both with respect to within the context of our own community. There have been experts that have been testified on, uh, that have testified, that have uh, you know, responded to uh, media inquiries, but most importantly, they're doing the important work that's going on in the laboratories uh, today that will have a profound impact on our lives. So I think it is, it is very important for us to remind ourselves of the, the tremendous impact that we as a university have on society, to remind ourselves, and then as we're thinking about being able to continue and foster that mission in the age of COVID-19 that we try to do everything possible to continue this work and this work is more important, more necessary than ever. These are unprecedented challenges. Uh, these are challenges that no generation has ever faced. Uh, they will be tough. Uh, there will be unexpected events that, we, that we're not even contemplating at this point. But I'm confident that we will get through this together as one community and as one Vanderbilt. 
Thank you very much. And it's now time to celebrate our faculty colleagues who have shown profound service, teaching and research during their time here at Vanderbilt. These people and their accomplishment represent our mission to transform lives through education and a commitment to transform humankind for the better. We have many colleagues to recognize today, beginning with those who are celebrating 25 years of service at Vanderbilt. Because we're not able to gather in person for the spring faculty assembly, we'll also be presenting teaching and service awards from last spring. And finally, we'll present the fall 2020 honors for exceptional research, scholarship, and creative expression. Since we cannot be together, all awards will be delivered to faculty. Let's get started with the service awards. Each year, Vanderbilt recognizes those members of the faculty who have just completed 25 years of full-time service. We will honor these colleagues with a presentation of a chair bearing a brass plate engraved with a professor's name. I will read each recipient's name in alphabetical order and I encourage you to read more about these colleagues and their many contributions to Vanderbilt and their disciplines on the Faculty Affairs webpage. This year, this year's 25-year chairs include Mark Adams, Professor of Urology, Christopher Aiken, Cornelius Vanderbilt Chair in Pathology, Microbiology, Microbiology and Immunology, Linda Ashford, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics, Thomas Orney, Professor of Medicine, Joanne Bakarowski, Associate Professor of Psychology, Timothy Blackwell, Rudy W. Jacobson, Professor of Pulmonary Medicine, Jin Chen, Professor of Medicine, James Crow Jr., and Scott Carroll, Professor of Pediatrics and Pathology, Microbiology and Immunology, Sean Donahue, Sam and Darthea Coleman, Professor of Pediatric Ophthalmology, David Galliani, Ernest W. Goodpasture, Professor of Experimental Pathology for Translational Research, Harry Gwertzman, Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, John Gear, Ginny and Connor Searcy, Dean of College of Arts and Sciences and Professor of Political Science, Richard Hawk, Assistant Professor of Clinical Medicine, Becky Keck, Assistant Professor of Nursing, Catherine McGowan, Associate Professor of Medicine, Roger Moore, Principal Senior Lecturer in English, Amy Palmieri, Assistant Professor on the Practice of Education, Thomas Palmieri, Distinguished Professor of Psychology, Richard Peak Jr., Mina Kopwallis Professor of Immunology, Richard Prince, Research Assistant Professor of Medicine, John Rafter, Principal Senior Lecturer of Mathematics, Peter Rousseau, Gertrude Conaway, Vanderbilt Professor of Economics, Seth Scholar, Professor of Pediatrics, Jin H. Shen, Research Assistant, Professor of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. Gieri Simonet, Professor of Mathematics. John Sloop, Professor of Communication Studies. W. Anderson Spickert III, Professor of Medicine. Lawrence Stack, Professor of Emergency Medicine. Richard Stein, Research Assistant, Professor of Molecular Physiology and Biophysics. Holly Tucker, Mellon Foundation Chair in the Humanities and Professor of French. Zhao Zhu, Research Associate Professor of Biological Sciences. Tao Yang, Research Professor of Medicine. And John Zick, Professor of Dermatology. Congratulations to you all. We will now present the Teaching and Service Awards from this past spring. These awards reflect faculty members' profound dedication to teaching and service to students and our broader community. They also pay tribute to those who helped build this great university. 
including past chancellors Joel Wyatt, Alexander Hurd, and Harvey Branscombe, and university stalwarts like Madison Serrat, who served Vanderbilt as a faculty member and senior leader for more than 60 years. We also honor philanthropic organizations like the Ellen Gregg Ingalls Foundation, which has supported the university for more than half a century. For a list of previous recipients for each of the following six awards, as well as a list of this year's recipients, please visit the Faculty Senate website after the conclusion of today's events. We will begin with the Madison Sarah Prize for Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching. The honoree for this award is selected based on exceptional classroom teaching and demonstrated commitment to student learning. The recipient receives an award of $5,000 and an engraved pewter cup. I am pleased to present this year's Sarah Prize to Celia Applegate, William R. Cannon Jr. Professor of History. Celia was nominated by her students who commended her ability to make facts and history come to life. They also noted the depth of Celia's feedback on assignments, as well as her overall dedication to the university. Celia is an award-winning scholar of the Culture Society and Politics of Modern Germany, with particular interest in the history of music, nationalism, and national identity. It is my great honor, honor to present her with the Sarad Prize, with the Sarad Prize. Congratulations, Celia. Next, the Ellen Gregg Ingalls Award for Excellence in Classroom Teaching is endowed by the Ingalls Foundation. The recipient is honored with a cash prize of $5,000 and an engraved pewter cup. This year's Ingalls Award goes to Alisa Hare, Senior Lecturer in Chemistry. Alisa was also nominated by her students, many of whom prized her approachability and genuine care for them and their success. She has served as the faculty co-advisor to the Vanderbilt American Chemical Society student chapter and as the co-principal investigator for the Vanderbilt research experience for undergraduates in chemical biology. Thank you, Elisa, and congratulations. The Harvey Branscombe Distinguished Professor Award praise tribute to Chancellor Branscombe, who was at the helm for the university for 17 years. This award comes with a prize of $5,000 and an engraved silver tray, an official designation as the Harvey Branscombe Distinguished Professor for one academic year. The award recognizes creative research and teaching, as well as service to students, colleagues, and society at large. This year's Branscombe Award goes to Christopher, Christopher Slobogan, Milton R. Underwood Professor of Law and Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. Nominated by Chris Guthrie, Dean of Vanderbilt Law School, Chris Slobogan is among the nation's leading scholars of criminal procedure, mental health law, and juvenile justice. He is one of the country's most cited criminal law scholars and his reasoning has informed judicial opinions more than 100 times. Chris has continually advocated for our society's most vulnerable members, impacting many lives in so doing. Chris, I'm honored to present you this award today. We will now present the Alexander Hurt Distinguished Service Professor Award. This award honors Chancellor Hurt a recognizing scholarship that solves an important social problem. The recipient carries the title of the Alexander Hurt Distinguished Service Professor for one year and receives an award of $5,000 and an engraved silver tray. I am pleased to present this year's award to William Schaffner, Professor of Health Policy. William was nominated by Melilla Bunton, Chair of the Department of Health Policy. He has made a profound impact on our society from creating new epidemiological science to translating those findings 
into progressive national health policy, to eloquently communicating them to a range of audiences, to television, radio, and mass media. Testament to his tremendous and enduring contributions to the Vanderbilt community, William also received the Branscom Award in 2010. Congratulations, William. And now we will present the Joe B. White Distinguished University Professor Award, which recognizes significant discoveries that bridge multiple academic disciplines. The recipient carries the title of Joe B. White Distinguished University Professor for one year and receives a $5,000 award and an engraved silver tray. I am pleased to present this year's award to Mary Des Shin, Professor of Human Organization and Community Development and Cornelius Vanderbilt Chair. Beth's work draws on theory and methods from anthropology, economics, psychology, and sociology to address the issue of family homelessness. Her longitudinal studies have had a significant impact of how cities seek to aid families and the lives of at-risk children. Beth was nominated by Camilla Benbo, Dean of Peabody College. Thank you, Beth, for your many contributions. Our final award from the spring is in honor of Bishop Joseph, Joseph Johnson, who was the first African-American to earn an undergraduate and a doctor degree at Vanderbilt, thus forging a critical path for students today. The Joseph A. Johnson Jr. Distinguished Leadership Professor Award goes to a member of the faculty who has proactively nurtured an academic environment where everyone feels valued and where diversity is celebrated. The recipient carries the title Joseph A. Johnson Jr. Distinguished Leadership Professor for one year and receives a cash award of $5,000 and an engraved silver tray. It is, an immense, it is with immense appreciation that I present this award today to Lucius Outlaw, Professor of Philosophy. Lou was nominated by Paul Taylor, W. Alton Jones Professor of Philosophy and Chair of the philosophy department. In his words, Lou not only contested exclusionary practices, he has also supported, guided, and inspired the people who grapple with and endure these exclusions. During his 20 years at Vanderbilt, Lou served as associate professor for undergraduate education and also led the African American Studies program. Lou, Thank you for your many contributions to Vanderbilt. Congratulations one more to all of our 2020 award recipients. It is now time for a traditional moment in the fall faculty assembly, the recognition of those faculty members who have made a significant impact for scholarship, research, and creative expression. The following awards consists of a $2,000 cash prize and an engraved pewter julep cup. We will begin with the Chancellor Awards for Research, which recognize excellence in published or presented works. For a list of previous recipients of this award, please visit the Faculty Senate website. This year, we will be honoring five faculty members with this award. The first recipients of the Chancellor's Award for, for Research is Jessica Clark, Professor of Law. Jessica was nominated by Chris Guthrie, Dean of Vanderbilt Law School, for her article, They, Them, and Theirs, which appeared in the Harvard Law Review in 2018. Her groundbreaking work explores how the law can recognize, recognize non-binary gender identities to the innovative use of familiar civil rights concepts, and her research also presents practical implications for gender regulation and enforcement and significant insights into anti-discrimination law more broadly. Congratulations, Jessica. Next, I'm delighted to honor Nicole Crianza, Assistant Professor of Biological Sciences. Nicole was nominated by Brent Eichmann, W.R. Cannon Jr. Professor of Biological Sciences. Focusing on the genetics and evolution of bird songs, 
Nicole's novel work explores how the evolutionary pressures on a learned behavior can indirectly drive the evolution of the brain. Published in eLife, Nicole's 2019 article was praised by editors, by editors for changing how we think about a fundamental behavior. Congratulations, Nicole. Our third recipient is Jennifer Fay, professor of cinema and media arts and professor of English. Her recent book, Inhospitable World, Cinema in the Time of the Anthrop Anthropocene, explores the ability for contemporary media to address and amend damage to our planet and social fabrics. This ambitious work has been heralded as an example of film scholarship in cultural criticism at its most relevant. Jen was nominated by Lutz Köpnick, Gertrude Conaway Vanderbilt Professor of Cinema, German and Media Arts, and Chair of the Department of German, Russian and East European Studies. Congratulations, Jen. We are also recognizing Jonathan Metzel, Frederick B. Rentschler II Professor of Sociology and Psychiatry and Professor of Medicine, Health and Society. Jonathan was nominated by Kit Carpenter, E. Bronson Ingham Professor of Economics, for his book, Dying of Whiteness, How the Politics of Racial Resentment is Killing America's Heartland. Professor Metzler's book explores the relationship between health policies, Ills, illness, and mortality in white middle-class America, while also tackling themes of white privilege and racial resentment. Early this year, it received the Robert F. Kennedy Book Award. Congratulations, Jonathan. Finally, I'd like to con congratulate Cynthia Reinhardt King, Cornelius Vanderbilt Professor of Biomedical Engineering. Cindy, Cindy was nominated by Douglas Adams, Chair of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, for an article about dynamics during collective invasion of breast cancer cells. By, the, by exploring the role of energy during cell migration, Cindy's cutting-edge work opens the door to new therapeutic options to target cancer metastasis. Cindy was recently awarded a three-year, $1 million grant from the prestigious WM Keck Foundation for work in this area. Thank you, Cindy, for this vital contribution. And congratulations to all of our recipients of the Chancellor's Award for Research. Next, we will announce the Chancellor's Award for Research in Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion in honor that we're presenting to three faculty members this year. The award consists of a cash prize of $2,000 and an engraved pewter julep cup. This award recognizing excess, recognizes excellence in research and scholarship, as well as creative expression, that specifically advances our understanding of equity, diversity, and inclusion. The first award goes to Melinda Aldrich, Assistant Professor of Medicine, and Jeffrey Bloom, Professor of Biostatistics, for their 2019 article exploring lung cancer screening guidelines for African Americans who smoke, and finding a striking racial dis racial disparity in the national guidelines for screening for lung cancer. Already their work is producing changes in these guidelines and has spurred meaningful progress surrounding equity in the delivery of cancer care. Melinda and Jeffrey were nominated by Jennifer Pietenpol, Executive Vice President for Research in Vanderbilt University Medical Center and Director of the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center. Congratulations to you both. We are also recognizing Velma McBride Murray, University Professor and Louis Audrey Betts Professor of Education and Human Development and Professor of Health Policy. Velma was nominated by Camilla Benbo, Dean of Peabody College, for an article in the Journal of Adolescent Health regarding HIV prevention among African-American youth. Her revolutionary findings point to the efficacy of technological modes in disarraying HIV-related risk behavior, pointing to increased accessibility to critical information. Congratulations, Velma. Our next award is the Thomas Jefferson Award for distinguished service to the university. This prize is given annually 
to a faculty member who has shown service to Vanderbilt to contribution to the university's councils and governments. The award consists of a cash prize of $5,000 and an engraved pewter goblet. This year, I'm pleased to recognize Jeffrey Fleming, professor of pediatrics who was nominated by Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, John Gere, and Dean of the Medical School and President and CEO of Vanderbilt University Medical Center, Jeffrey Balzer. In addition to serving as chair of the faculty senate, Jeffrey has contributed to many committees, searches, and initiatives. These have spanned topics including equity, diversity, and inclusion, the faculty manual, and our community's well-being and mental health. Jeffrey, congratulations, and thank you for your many contributions. Our final award this afternoon is Vanderbilt's top faculty honor, the Earl Sutherland Prize for Achievement in Research. This award is bestowed upon a faculty member who has garnered significant critical recognition on a national or global scale. The prize consists of $10,000 and an engraved pewter julep cup, and the winner's name added to a silver bowl following a famous design by Paul Revere. This year, the award goes to James Crow and Scott Carroll, Professor of Pediatrics and Pathology, Microbiology and Immunology. Jim also serves as the director of the Vanderbilt Vaccine Center. Throughout his 25 years at Vanderbilt, Jim has solidified his impact as one of the world's leading experts on the molecular basis for human immunity to viruses. In recent months, his lab has been a leader in identifying a vaccine for COVID-19. He has published similar works on the study of immunity, having reported isolating of, having reported the isolation of neutralizing human bodies for Ebola, Marburg, monkeypox, smallpox, and Zika, among other viruses. In addition, Jim has pioneered methods in compute computational immunology for the rational design of vaccines and directs the human immunome program, one of the largest genetic programs projects to date. Throughout his career, Jim has received significant recognition, including the Amy e. Johnson Award for Excellence in Pediatric Research and the Outstanding Investigator Award of the American Federation for Medical Research, among, others, among other honors. He's a member of the National Academy of Medicine, a fellow of the American Academy of Microbiology, the American Association for the Advancement in Science, and the National Academy of Inventors. Jim was nominated by Steve Weber, James C. Overall Professor of Pediatrics. Jim, please accept my most sincere congratulation on this tremendous honor. Again, I would like to extend my gratitude to all of our honorees and to the tremendous contributions that you've made to this university. Thanks as well to the colleagues, mentors, and friends who have made the nominations and to the Faculty Research Award Review Committee for their careful review. Today's recognitions are just the pinnacle of what we can achieve together and as individuals as members of Vanderbilt University. With that, I would like to welcome Faculty Senate Chair Katrin McTamini back to the podium to deliver her updates to you on the year ahead for the Faculty Senate. Good afternoon. In my role as Chair of the Faculty Senate this year, and on behalf of Ben Harris, your Vice Chair of Faculty Senate, and the 60 senators representing Vanderbilt schools and colleges, I am so pleased to be addressing you today. As you may know, the Senate hosts two faculty assemblies each year. Our assembly this past spring was presented virtually and asynchronously, two terms many of us had only previously imagined in science fiction movies. This fall assembly, though still virtual, carries new weight, both symbolically and practically. Coming together now, we honor the cycles of life at the university, of the power of gathering as a community to acknowledge the beginning of another academic year, and of our place even in these new times, 
within a history of faculty affirmation that precedes our work and will persist beyond our tenure. And practically, our digital assembly serves as a reminder of our own capacity to create, to learn, to investigate, and to celebrate together, of our ability to promote our community and to invest in the decisions that guide it, and to do so even in challenging times with both dignity and joy. The Senate is the deliberative and representative body of the faculties and essential to Vanderbilt's model of shared governance. We engage our work with some shared commitments in mind that all members of our community are entitled to justice, respect, and civility, that the diversity of our university is a strength and an opportunity to reach across social, political, and geographical borders to serve the common good through open and respectful discourse that the same systematic inquiry that drives our work as scholars should inform public decision making, and that the security, well-being, and education of all of our students is our guiding responsibility. This year, more than ever, we look to these shared values as we navigate new waters. Before we address our goals for this year, I'm honored to introduce you to the other members of the Faculty Senate community. In addition to myself and Vice Chair Ben Harris, the officers are Chair-Elect Mark Magnuson, Vice Chair-Elect Ryan Middaw, Past Chair John McLean, and Past Vice Chair Holly Allgood. We also have a new administrator for the Faculty Senate, Stacy McCarty, who you may know from her most recent role as a program coordinator for the Vanderbilt Leadership Academy. We all look forward to having her as a part of the Faculty Senate team. Like Chancellor Deermeyer, I am by nature an optimistic person. But working with these colleagues gives me even greater hope that the work of the Senate will be focused, impactful, and compassionate this year. Last year's Senate focused on civility and community, a value we saw enacted in each of the Senate meetings, in expanded efforts to engage our community outside of the Senate chamber, in the faculty engaged newsletter, the diversity efforts celebra celebrated through the I Am Vanderbilt series, and in the collaborative partnership under Susan Wente's leadership that has continued as we've welcomed our new chancellor to Vanderbilt. These were values that, in practice, affirm the delicate balance inherent in the work of the Faculty Senate. We are charged to dance at a horizon line, attentive to the policies that influence our lived experience as research, practice, and artist scholars, and yet keeping one eye on the aspirational possibilities on the university and the people we are yet to become. It's a dance that asks us to be both nimble and assured, responsive to the immediate and deliberate in action. You see that balance in the establishment of the Senate's task force on administerial effectiveness. Led by past Senate Chair Vicki Green, the task force is comprised of faculty, staff, and other stakeholders with charges to consider long-term improvements to resources and administrative supports, and individuals with the authority to take immediate action on issues that can be addressed now. You've seen it, too, in the hours of work contributed this summer on the Provost's University Continuity Working Group and its subgroups. This body, called to action by Provost Susan Wente, exemplifies another Senate core value that the same systematic inquiry that drives our work as scholars should inform public decision making across the university. This group, chaired by past Senate Chair John McLean and interim associate Vice Chancellor for People and Business Services Laura Nayron, and including its subcommittees, incorporates the diverse perspectives of over 100 faculty, staff, students, and administrators. The investment of these voices has helped to craft our immediate return to campus and continues to inform long-term planning for the thoughtful preparation for our future. The most important way that you can contribute to this work is by attending our faculty senate meetings. Our first session is next Thursday, September 3rd at 410, and like most of our gatherings on campus now, will be hosted via Zoom. Attending senate meetings offers you, allows you to offer your voice directly to the issues before the senate like the resolution of the civility statement brought forth by the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Standing Committee last year, or the clarifications to the appeals and grievance process that the Faculty Manual Committee has worked to finalize. And for those of you who have not been able to attend a meeting because of the limited parking options in the past, you'll be happy to hear that at least for the foreseeable future, you can join us from wherever you have internet access. I look forward to seeing screens and screens of faculty faces at our meetings this year. We began this year with ambitious goals to build upon the momentum of last year's Senate and to illuminate those issues of equity and diversity within the Senate and across the faculties. Our plans in March 
emphasized the deliberate long-term view. We did not anticipate the immediate crises we would be asked to attend to, both in our response to the pandemic and in the urgency with which we worked to recognize and correct inequalities on our campus, in our community, and in the society we study and in which we live, work, and teach. Your faculty Senate representatives will continue to work daily to inform Vanderbilt's response to the COVID crisis, to do so in a spirit of community, and to make sure your expectations for communication are met. But we hear too the call for more than illumination for what Matthew Kay calls not light, but fire, as we prioritize those charges to the Senate that we believe will strengthen the bonds that exist between us while we move together towards a more just and equitable future. In the charges to each of the Senate's eight distinct standing committees this year, you'll find some common themes emerging. We are one university, made stronger by the multitude of perspectives and modalities offered by our faculty. We are developing charges this year that we hope will affirm the diversity as an essential and invaluable asset to be protected and promoted, an effort we have shorthanded e pluribus unum. You'll see charges focused on protecting and investigating disparities between the experiences of research-focused and practice-focused faculties and between university faculty and BUMC faculty. Likewise, you will see charges this year that intentionally seek to amplify the voices of historically underrepresented faculty communities, including a specific charge to the members of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee to serve as ex-officio members of each of the other seven committees, assuring an equity focus in the work of those committees, as well as dedicated efforts to diversify the committees themselves through direct invitations to faculty with unique expertise to serve as voting members of those committees. The work of the Senate should be measured by its capacity to vocalize and amplify the complicated harmonies of the multiple voices we represent. To do so, our group must be both welcoming to and reflective of those voices, and that doesn't happen by accident. We want to acknowledge the work for this model, the model for this work, exemplified by Provost Susan Wente. In Susan's commitment to equitable representation in the development of informed policy, she has integrated diverse perspectives in her own office and elevated our shared expectation of what leadership looks like at Vanderbilt. As a scientist, Susan understands the importance of sample size and objective analysis. As a colleague, she exemplifies grace under pressure and the transparency that precedes trust. We are grateful for her continued partnership with the Faculty Senate. Thank you, Susan. We look forward too to our developing relationship with our new Chancellor, Daniel Deermeyer. Our time together may be as easily counted in weeks as months, but I feel comfortable predicting some qualities of Daniel's leadership that affirm my optimism. He has stepped into this role with both courage and humility conducting expertise from across the university and medical center to champion a model for our return to campus, which is uniquely Vanderbilt's, specific to the complexities of this university at this moment, and protective of the mission and values we seek to preserve. He has sought out the meaningful involvement of the Senate in difficult decisions, even in the short time he's been here, and he's been responsive in significant ways to concerns that we've elevated from the faculty. We are confident that Daniel is a leader who will partner with faculty in challenging times, and we look forward to celebrating those successes together once we've endured these days. Thank you, Daniel. Finally, we want to thank Bruce Evans, the chair of the Board of Trust and other members of Vanderbilt's board for the courageous efforts behind the Chancellor search process last year to pressing decisions regarding the pandemic to enduring action surrounding diversity and inclusion. The board has always found new ways to engage our faculty and our community in its decisions. They've engaged with us and they have rallied around us. They share in our vision for the, for the future of this university. All of these leaders agree that we can do this and we will do it together. Reach out to your Senator. If you're not sure who that is, visit our website, vanderbilt.edu forward slash faculty Senate or come to a Senate meeting Again, the next one, the first one is next Thursday, September 3rd at 410. Or reach out through our social media, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to follow our work more often. You'll find links to those in the chat window. I want to end with a personal note. This August marks 30 years since I arrived at Vanderbilt as a newly minted freshman at Peabody College. I remember moving into Van to Hemingway Hall, where the Warren and Moore Colleges now stand. 
and how disappointed I was that I, got one, I didn't get one of the really nice rooms at Vandy Barnard, where the Bronson Ingram College now stands. Tomorrow, I will teach the first day of the same class that was my first class on my first day here 30 years ago. And in those 30 years, in over three degrees from this university, I've learned a little bit about Vanderbilt. The buildings change. Gardens grow where there used to be parking lots. Bridges are built, and each season seems to bring a new sidewalk to connect us. Vanderbilt changes, slowly to be sure, but it changes. But this space is more than the architecture that marks our place in a skyline. A university, this university, is a living collection of scientists, teachers, artists, scholars, dancing together on a horizon that we can't cross in our own lifetimes. Bell Hooks challenges us to remember the classroom remains the most radical space of possibility in the academy. As faculty, we embody that space of possibility. We demonstrate in times of crisis, the creativity and curiosity that we celebrate in times of calm. We breathe in together, we breathe out together. Sometimes we have to stop to catch our breath, but we expand and contract as the challenges demand. Our ability to persist depends on our flexibility as faculty to come together in an aspirational work, grounded in science, enacted with compassion, expanding what we know today and modeling for the next generation of scientists, teachers, artists, and scholars who they too have the capacity to become. Thank you all for joining us today, and I look forward to working with you this year. Have a great evening.